If you were terrorized by a vicious leprechaun that won't stop until he finds his gold, what would you do? This creature is absolutely terrifying, and there's no way to escape from his gold-hungry rampage. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the evil leprechaun in Leprechaun. These civilians are about to be terrorized by a bloodthirsty fairy, arriving home after downing a bottle of liquor. This suited man Daniel finds his wife standing on the front porch. He begins talking about how they're going to be living a better life now, but is interrupted by this driver who walks through. Asking about the funeral package, his wife informs him that it's already arrived, but she's too scared to touch it. That's when the driver walks out, wishing them a good evening, before Daniel reveals that they're about to be rich. Disappointed, she thinks that his mother's ashes are inside the box, but she's completely wrong. Daniel smashes open a jar and reveals that he's found a pot of gold from a real-life leprechaun. His wife believes that Daniel is completely wasted at making up stories but this man is actually telling the truth. Later that night, she hears someone singing a nursery rhyme from inside this leather suitcase. The wife puts her head closer and hears a childlike voice telling her that she's about to suffocate. Suddenly, a leprechaun emerges from the suitcase and chases Daniel's wife, pushing her down the basement staircase and killing the old woman. That makes one victim down with eight more to go. Outside, Daniel announces that he hid the gold and hears a response from someone that isn't his wife. That's when the leprechaun appears with a tray of boiling tea in hand. Daniel questions how the creature managed to track him down and demands to know where his wife is. The leprechaun tells him that she tripped and fell downstairs. Hearing this, Daniel rushes to his bedroom where he hid a gun and takes it out of the bedside table. He walks into the living room and takes out a four-leaf clover that causes the leprechaun to panic. Daniel insists that he found the gold fairly and shoots his pistol at the little creature, scaring it into running off into the basement. Dragon City is a free-to-play mobile game that is available on both iOS and Android platforms. It's a world of fun and currently my favorite mobile game on the market. Collect over a thousand dragons that all come with their own unique features, breeding them together and forming a powerful dragon empire. Grow food, earn gold, and find gyms to build up your own customizable city where you'll be keeping all of your friendly creatures. Personally, my favorite feature is the ability to take your empire online and fight PvP battles in the Master Arena, putting your dragons to the test against other Dragon Masters. Not only that, you'll want to make sure to complete exciting weekly minigames to claim daily prizes and capture new dragons. You can train these little guys and teach them all kinds of attacks, evolving your draconic army to beat anyone that gets in your way. There's even dragons based on some of your favorite YouTubers like the Sidemen, among many others that you can hatch and add to your collection. Download Dragon City for free by clicking the link in the description or scan my QR code on screen to get a special free starter pack with 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, plus the rare Scout Dragon. Thank you to Dragon City for sponsoring this video. Downstairs, Daniel finds it sitting next to his dead wife and furiously holds the four-leaf clover in its direction. This creature is pure evil, and he'll do anything in his power to retrieve the gold. Okay, this greedy old man has stolen this little leprechaun's pot of gold while burying his dead mother back in Ireland. He's just arrived home in North Dakota to find that the leprechaun has followed him back to the United States and is pissed the f*** off that he's had his whole life savings stolen from right underneath him. He really should have thought about opening a bank account earlier, but now that he's lost it all, he's going to stop at nothing to get it back, even if it means murdering these people. Daniel here is going to have to act fast, or else he's going to end up just like his wife. Leprechauns have been found in Irish folklore since the 8th century. Their name comes from the word leprechaun, which means small body. Leprechauns were originally thought to be water creatures because of their earliest reference in a medieval tale called Adventure of Fergus, Son of Letty, where Fergus Mac Letty falls asleep on the beach, only to find his body dragged out to sea by three little fairies. Since that time, the mythology around leprechauns has grown, but at their core, leprechauns are thought to be a part of the fairy family. They are independent creatures that are often portrayed as bearded men, but like all other fairies, leprechauns can be killed by iron. Iron is believed to be the opposite of magic, and neutralizes it. And the majority of fairy tales, even so much as touching iron, can kill a fairy. That's why Daniel here needs to act fast and find himself some iron in this big old house before he becomes leprechaun meat. Anything from cutlery to gardening tools can be made of iron, so he has plenty of options to work with. Historically, parents even used to make their children's bed out of iron to keep them from being stolen by fairies in the middle of the night. So if Daniel has a bed frame made with iron rods, he could break it apart to stab the leprechaun. Daniel seems to think the best way to kill a leprechaun is by using a four-leaf clover to scare it off, which isn't a part of any Irish folklore, but if it were me, and I had stolen a leprechaun's pot of gold, and I knew in my world that four-leaf clovers could safeguard me from a leprechaun, 
I would have used some of that gold by now to purchase a whole bunch of four leaf clovers to surround my house and put in my clothing. Instead, Daniel here has been too busy driving around in a limousine getting drunk to prepare himself for when this little fairy demon comes back to reclaim what is rightfully his. Shocked, Daniel regrets not killing him when he was found in Ireland and shoots the monster multiple times, knocking the creature out from the pain. Daniel cautiously walks behind this crate and places the unconscious leprechaun inside. Waking up, the creature continues to berate him about the gold while he nails down the crate top, making sure that he can never escape again. He grabs a tub of gasoline and pours it on the crate, moving his dead wife upstairs. The leprechaun demands to have the gold back in exchange for disappearing. That's when Daniel has a stroke, lighting a match, but he falls down and passes out on the floor. Ten years later, this father, JD, and his daughter, Tori, arrive at their brand new house in the middle of North Dakota. But Tori can't believe how run down their brand new house looks. Her father asks her not to be so judgmental, while Tori continues complaining about the state of their property. In the basement, the man tells her that it might need a bit of cleaning up, but Tori doesn't want to stay, suggesting that she rent a hotel instead. That's when Tori spots a gigantic spider crawling on the wall. Terrified, she runs out of the basement, confirming her decision not to stay inside the new house. Tori storms out of the front door while booking a luxury room before bumping into this young man, Nathan, and knocks over his tub of paint thinner. She notices that his equipment is all over the ground and hands him a $20 bill, but he refuses the money, asking for a simple apology instead. Confused, she rushes out of the house and insists that she can't stay near this dirty place any longer. The young man laughs, commenting how strange it is that girls can't handle a few tiny insects. Tori confronts him on being a sexist, insisting that she isn't scared, and that's when her father walks out to confess that the house wasn't as well kept as he expected. Tori has changed her mind, telling her father that she doesn't have a problem with it and wants to stay. Meanwhile, this big guy Ozzy tells his friend Alex that he saw a flying saucer-like object that fell from the sky, which was making strange noises in the air. Alex doesn't believe him, and they meet with JD, who introduces himself to the painters. He offers to help them with any physical work, but Alex refuses, walking off to the side and telling his friend that he wants a beer. In the basement, Tori walks down the stairs with a tray of drinks, calling out for the worker. Suddenly, a dirty tarp falls directly onto her, and Nathan here apologizes for misplacing it. Tori accepts his apology, pointing towards this crate and hoping that she didn't break anything inside. Nathan informs her that the previous owner, Dan O'Grady, used to collect a lot of junk, mentioning that he was a strange man. They decide to see what's inside, but hear a paint can drop from outside. Nathan rushes out of the house to find Ozzy scolding Alex for not keeping the ladder steady, and Tori here tells the painted man where he can wash himself off, now realizing that the killer leprechaun is about to make a deadly return. Entering the house, Ozzy washes himself off and hears the child's voice coming from the basement. Confused, he walks downstairs to hear someone singing a nursery rhyme, but then it stops. That's when he hears a child asking to be let out of this crate, and the man removes the four-leaf clover, making the biggest mistake of his life. Okay, all hell is about to break loose on these people. There's a demonic leprechaun trapped in their basement, and it doesn't make any sense at all that Daniel O'Grady left him here all these years to rot. Sure, the guy had a stroke, but he's still alive and has sold his house 10 years later to these poor, unassuming people. He had plenty of time to get rid of the leprechaun, and it was bound to be let out of the box one way or another after selling the house. It doesn't make any sense at all that his boxes are even still in the house either, since normally an old owner needs to clear their things before the new owner moves in. It's totally stupid that Daniel didn't prepare himself before this moment to get rid of the leprechaun, and now he's going to make everyone else pay for it. If it were me, in that 10 year time period, I would have cashed in the leprechaun's gold and used it to buy plenty of iron and four leaf clovers to take the leprechaun down. Daniel has had a stroke, so I would have used the money to buy the best medical care money can provide to help me return to full health. That way I can work to fight off this demonic bearded fairy once and for all. The long term effects of strokes can be severe, but in some cases, the person returns to normal, and oftentimes, people don't even know that they've had a stroke to begin with. Daniel would have to remain tight lipped about the fact that there's a leprechaun running loose in his basement, so people don't think he's lost his mind. But depending on his condition, Daniel should hire an aid worker to help him track down Irish folklore specialists around the world and others that have claimed to see leprechauns to get his facts straight. Even though we know that iron is supposed to kill a leprechaun in reality, it's possible that in this world, that's not the case. The Ford Leaf Clover has helped trap the leprechaun for 10 years, so it's been effective, despite it not being cited in any real-life folklore. By figuring out what's real and what's fiction, he can then go back to the house and finish off the leprechaun before moving on with his life. 
he has the Leprechaun in a super vulnerable position, and he really just needs to know how many Four Leaf Clovers he needs to shove down its throat to send it back to the depths of Irish hell. The other thing Daniel should keep in mind is that based on the adventure of Fergus, son of Letty, Fergus McLeddy was able to capture his Leprechaun abductors and then barter with them for their release. The man asked for three wishes, and if Daniel can confirm with an expert on Leprechauns that this is true, he can strike up a deal with the Leprechaun and give him his gold back in exchange for three wishes. Then, he can wish for all the money he wants. That way, he and the Leprechaun can both leave happy, with no blood or four-leaf clovers shed. Meanwhile, the Leprechaun bursts out of the crate and asks the man for a lighter. He then takes a spider off of his wrist and eats it whole, mentioning that it's been 10 years since he had any food. Terrified, Ozzy questions what the monster is, and the creature points out his attire as a clear sign of being a Leprechaun. He asks Ozzy if he's seen any gold around the house, demanding to know, or else he'll rip the man's ear off. The man desperately runs away, but the creature uses his magic to close the basement door. That's when Ozzy reopens the door, and the Leprechaun reveals that his powers have been weakened without the gold. Outside, the man freaks out, while telling the others what he saw downstairs. Alex questions if he was just seeing things, and Nathan decides that he's going to take a look with Tori tagging along. The group walks downstairs to see that the crate has been destroyed, with Ozzy blaming it on the Leprechaun. He insists that the creature was real, describing him as having buckles on his shoes and disfigured teeth. Suddenly, they hear movement from the corner of the room. Nathan goes to check it out, but finds a rat crawling around in the dark. They dismiss Ozzy's story and decide to head out of the basement, now realizing that this man is telling the truth. Outside, a rainbow appears in the distance, and Ozzy connects the dots. This must be more evidence that the leprechaun is real, and he runs off with Alex to find a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. They find the end of this broken down truck, and look inside to find a gold coin that the man takes. Alex demands to have a look, and chases Ozzy inside the vehicle. That's when he notices a pouch near the driver's seat and finds a hidden stash of gold inside. Alex takes it for himself, but questions if it's real. Ozzy tells him that he can find out by biting it with his teeth, and tries it out, but accidentally swallows the coin. Alex tells him they can check if it's real in town, and hide the rest for themselves. He suggests that they place it in the old well next to Tori's house, and that's when the boys realize that they're now rich, with enough money to afford Ozzy a brain operation to make him smarter. Okay, things are getting absolutely crazy. Ozzy has come face to face with the demonic leprechaun and has followed a rainbow to a bag of gold. Nobody believes that Ozzy has really seen a leprechaun, but the second that they found gold at the end of a rainbow, the others should have taken him more seriously. The man has just swallowed one of the pieces of gold and isn't even worried that the pissed off three feet tall mystical creature in the basement isn't going to make him pay for it. If it were me, rather than try to get to a pawn shop to figure out how much the gold coins are worth, I would take Ozzy to a pharmacy or convenience store and get him x lax and colon cleanse to help him move this coin through his digestive tract as quickly as possible. Keeping the coins and selling them to make money is always an option, but these people don't seem to be the most money-savvy people in the world, so their best-case scenario is returning the coins to the Leprechaun ASAP. Aside from the others not believing the Leprechaun is real, the only problem is that Ozzy has now swallowed one of the coins, and even if they give the rest of them back, the Leprechaun will still come after them to retrieve the last of his gold. Unless they kill Ozzy, there's no way of getting it back right this second either. At this point, they should take Ozzy seriously and get him to make as many bowel movements as possible to return the coins to the Leprechaun. Now, swallowing a coin isn't unheard of but it's usually done by babies and young children. The coin isn't a danger to the person that swallowed it, but it takes about two to three days for the coin to move through the digestive tract regularly. In Ozzy's case, since he's not a baby, it may take even longer. However, Ozzy and his friends don't have that much time to spare, and they need to get the big man to make bowel movements quickly. While trying to force Ozzy to get the coin out of his system, Alex should take the coins and distribute them in a line, leading them away from the house. That way, once the leprechaun sees the first coin, he'll follow each one to the next. The bag is full of coins, so if Alex lines them up far enough away, it should take the leprechaun several hours to collect them all. By that time, he will have been led away from the house before he realizes that all the coins aren't there. A few hours might not be enough time for the coin to make its way through Ozzy's digestive tract, so Alex can also dig a trap that the leprechaun can fall into. He needs to find a four-leaf clover to contain him in the hole, but if the one in the basement still works, it will save him the time of picking another one from a clover patch. Meanwhile, Tori and Nathan work on painting the house, when they realize the need to restock. Nathan heads inside while Tori looks in the truck for more cans of paint, feeling someone's hand grabbing her leg from underneath. She thinks that it's just Nathan messing around until she spots him standing behind her. Suddenly, the leprechaun scratches her leg and she screams out in shock. 
the girl insists that it wasn't an animal and felt like a human hand caressing her leg. That's when the father hears a cat in the distance and he assures Tori that the animal is responsible for her injury. He tries to dig out the cat from inside this tree trunk, but is brutally bitten on the hand. Freaking out, the others insist that he head straight to the hospital and move him into the truck. They don't realize that an evil leprechaun is responsible for all these strange coincidences, but they'll soon find out that purchasing this house was a terrible mistake. Nathan realizes that the truck isn't starting and Alex rushes over to fix the distributor cap. He pulls at the cables and they head off to the hospital while this leprechaun gets ready to cause absolute carnage. Arriving at the hospital, the others take JD inside and Alex suggests they take this time to check out their newfound gold. The two walk over to this collectible store with no idea that the gold hungry leprechaun is right around the corner. Meanwhile, the inspector informs them that if the coin is made of solid gold, it could be sold for $500 a piece. He adds that it could be worth even more if it has any historical value. The inspector asks to keep it overnight for further analysis and assures them that he'll keep it in his foolproof safe. That's when Ozzy questions the man on whether it came from a leprechaun and receives a strange look from the man. Alex ignores his friend and tells the inspector to keep their gold a secret before leaving to join the others. Later, the inspector places the gold in his safe, now realizing that a killer leprechaun is watching his every move. That's when a bicycle stops him from opening the safe and he looks around confused as to where it came from. After making sure no one's entered the shop, he walks back to the safe and opens it, but that's when the leprechaun emerges from inside of it. He demands the gold coin back and scolds him for taking it, asking to play with it. The leprechaun grabs a pogo stick before jumping onto his chest, violently killing him and mentioning that he has 99 gold coins left to acquire. That makes two victims down with seven more to go. Okay, this leprechaun is out for blood and clearly doesn't care whether or not the person that has his gold is innocent or not. He's just killed this inspector and is going to get his other 99 coins back whatever it takes. Alex and Ozzy should be telling the others about the pot of gold they found in the truck, but instead they're being completely stupid and ignoring the warning signs that there's an evil leprechaun on the loose. Ozzy has tried to convince the others that he really did see a leprechaun, but nobody believes him. The gang should really be collecting four leaf clovers and iron, but there's one other thing they can do to appease the angry little fairy. Another type of mystical fairy that the leprechaun is commonly associated with is the clerican. Like the leprechaun, the clerican is known for its mischievous behavior and shoemaking. These two are so closely associated that they're often believed to be the same creature. The main difference between the clerican and the leprechaun is that the clerican loves drinking and is usually found in pubs and breweries. Ozzy and Alex can put this theory to the test that leprechauns and clericans are the same creatures and buy several bottles of hard alcohol and cases of beer for him to drink. By leaving the alcohol out as a peace offering for the leprechaun, he could get himself so drunk that he won't be able to carry out his evil plans. The guy hasn't had a drink in 10 years, so his tolerance is probably super low too. Once the leprechaun is so drunk that he can't see straight, the boy should steal the leprechaun's shoes to throw him off even more. This leprechaun is obsessed with cleaning shoes, and by taking his away, he'll have to find them first before moving on to find his gold coins. This will give Oz even more time to do a bowel movement and get the coin out of his digestive system. The poor guy's probably stressed out of his mind and going to the bathroom under these circumstances isn't an ideal situation. If the boys have more than a second to relax while the leprechaun is shoeless and drunk off his ass, then Ozzy might be able to release the final coin and free them from the little leprechaun's attacks. Giving away one of the coins to the shop owner was a step in the wrong direction, but lucky for them, it bought them more time to do the right thing and return the stolen gold. Unfortunately, that's not what they do, and now they will all have to suffer the consequences of Daniel O'Grady's greed. Meanwhile, Tori and Nathan eat dinner while she wonders where his friends ran off to for such a long time. Tori questions if they got lost. On the road, this cop watches as a speeding vehicle passes his view. He chases the car down and pulls it over to realize that it's not your regular automobile. Mistaking the leprechaun for a young child, he tells him that it's too late to be out, but the creature informs him that he's 600 years old. The cop refuses to believe what he's saying and demands he take off his mask. That's when the leprechaun brutally grabs his face, cutting it wide open and taking his gun. The cop tries to run away, but it's already too late. The monster won't stop coming. He stalks through the forest before hiding behind this tree and readies his baton. The leprechaun acknowledges this as a game of hide and seek and paces around the area. The bloodied cop takes his time and sprints out of hiding, discovering the creature's hat lying on the ground. He picks it up, but then hears the leprechaun taunting him to shoot while teleporting behind multiple trees. Freaked out, the cop pleads to be left alone, knowing that he's dealing with a dangerous individual. He watches as the leprechaun runs to the dark, and the man lies down next to this tree, completely exhausted. Letting his guard down for a second, the creature drops down onto his shoulders and grabs a hold of his face before snapping the man's neck, brutally killing him. 
That makes three victims down, with six more to go. Meanwhile, at the diner, Nathan questions why Tori isn't eating and offers her meatloaf, commenting that she's looking a bit skinny. Tori tells him that she's a vegetarian and finds it disgusting to eat animals. That's when Nathan pulls her shoe off from under the table, informing Tori that her own shoe is made up of dead cow skin. She demands he give it back, while Alex and Ozzy finally arrive at the restaurant. At the house, the leprechaun continues its search for gold and rummages through this cabinet to find a box of Lucky Charms. He recognizes the cover, taking a bite of the breakfast cereal before immediately spitting it out. After looking through every drawer, he finds a bunch of shoes and polishes them to perfection. Later, the others arrive home and see that their place has been ransacked. Tori questions how this could have happened, and Nathan suggests that a bear from the hills might be the culprit. Ozzy tells him that this was the work of a leprechaun, recalling that the creature has an obsession with shining shoes. Tori doesn't care about who or what caused it, and storms out of the house. Scared, she walks right back in, and Nathan gives her a broom to begin cleaning. They finish up with the kitchen, but then they hear a bicycle bell from the hallway. That's when Ozzy walks into view with a bike bell and startles Tori. Later, the man and Alex discuss whether they could kill a leprechaun if it ever happened to appear. Alex insists that it only takes one one shot to the creature's head in order to stop it. That's when they hear the bike bell ringing, and Tori walks in asking Ozzy to stop ringing the bell, but then she sees it on the side table. The group realizes that the ringing is coming from somewhere else, and Nathan checks the house to make sure there's no one else inside, as the others stay closely behind him. Outside, he paces around with his flashlight, when suddenly Nathan falls into a bear trap. The leprechaun runs out to tease him, and swipes at Nathan's leg before the man fights back. He manages to push the creature away with his flashlight as the others rush out to see what's happened. Shocked, the leprechaun pounces on Nathan while Tori demands that they call the police. They try to hit the creature off of Nathan while Alex here runs to get a shotgun. Ozzy calls the police to the O'Grady farm and mentions they've been attacked by a leprechaun, being laughed at by the officers in the police station. Alex rushes back to hand over the shotgun, tripping over and passing Nathan the weapon. The young man pushes the leprechaun off of him and fires directly at the creature. That's when Ozzy runs out to take Alex back inside, while Tori removes the brutal bear trap from Nathan's leg. Standing up, he continues to fire off shots, making sure that they've killed the creature for good. Nathan takes a look behind the bushes to find that the leprechaun has disappeared. Realizing the severity of his wound, Tori demands that they call for a paramedic now. Ozzy informs them that he's already made a phone call, telling the others that he mentioned the leprechaun when he asked the cops to come. Hearing this, Tori realizes that no one will be coming and how helps Nathan inside, but discovers the phone line has been cut. She asks Alex to use his Boy Scout experience to assist with Nathan's deadly wound, and orders Ozzy to collect any kind of medical equipment so they can clean it. Tori explains that they'll stop his bleeding and take him out to the truck, assuming that the leprechaun is already dead. Okay, the bodies are piling up, and this leprechaun is showing no signs of stopping. Nathan is severely injured, and Ozzy has told the police that a leprechaun is attacking them. Backup isn't coming anytime soon, and these people need to get the heck out of there before the bloodthirsty little freak comes back for more. The only problem is this thing can apparate, appearing and reappearing wherever it wants. The gang is not going to be able to get that gold coin in Ozzy's stomach back to him anytime soon, so they have to reconsider their options to kill the leprechaun based on what's in the house. Alex here knows where he hid the gold, and at this point, it's really not worth it to try to keep it. They could try to shove one or two coins in their pockets to sell later, but if they aren't able to kill the leprechaun, this will only piss it off more by doing this in the process. If it were me, I would take the bag of leprechaun coins and mix it with a small iron object I'm able to find in the house. Something like bolts, hooks, or a door knocker should do the trick. Once the leprechaun reaches down into the bag and touches the piece of iron, it will be injured or killed on contact. The gang should then take the leprechaun's body and trap it back in the box they found it in, using iron and four-leaf clovers to keep it secure. It may take them some time to find a bunch of four-leaf clovers, so they should drive a piece of iron through its chest to try to knock it out for as long as possible. Most demons are usually kept dead by decapitating them or driving a stake through the heart, so applying the same idea, but with iron, can't hurt. The other thing is that nobody knows what exactly happens to the leprechaun if his gold is destroyed. If he wakes up and the gold is already broken down, then he won't have any gold to go out in search of. This probably isn't the best idea, because it might only make him angrier, but it could also kill him, since in this world, his powers increase when he has the gold with him. Gold can't be completely destroyed, but it can be dissolved by aqua regia, which is made by mixing hydrochloric acid and nitric acid. Since it might be difficult to get their hands on this at the moment, bleach and chlorine don't destroy gold altogether, but can cause corrosion. By wearing down the gold, this will hopefully also wear down the leprechaun's powers. The group helps Nathan outside and into the truck, but it fails to start. Alex realizes that the distributor cab is broken again and carefully heads out to open the hood. Suddenly, the leprechaun pops out of the engine with the cables in his mouth. Alex rushes back into the vehicle as they close the windows, but it's not over yet. 
the Leprechaun smashes through the windshield and continues to terrorize the innocent people, managing to bite Ozzy's ear. That's when Tori takes out this car cigarette lighter, jabbing the burning hot end into the creature's face and forcing him to run away. Seconds later, he comes out of the shed with a small car, racing into the truck and knocking it into a ditch. The creature walks over to check on the group, but finds no one inside. Seeing how distracted the monster is, they run back into the house while the Leprechaun chases right behind them, but they slam the door brutally closed on his hand. The dismembered body part opens the door by itself, crawling out of the building and returning to the leprechaun. Meanwhile, Tori here questions what to do next. She grabs her portable phone and calls the police to inform them of their situation, but her battery dies before she can explain further. They patch Ozzy up while Nathan demands to know when the police are coming. Ozzy mentions that this leprechaun is absolutely deadly, but Tori refuses to believe that the mythical creature is real. Ozzy accidentally mentions that they found gold in an old car near the house, and Alex hits him, reminding the man to keep quiet. Confused, the girl brings Alex over to ask what this is all about, and the kid admits that they hid it to afford an operation for Ozzy's brain. He tells Tori that it's hidden in a water bucket at a nearby well, and the girl figures they need to give back the leprechaun as gold if they want to stop the deadly creature. Nathan attempts to help, but they insist that he's too injured. Taking the shotgun from him, Tori walks outside to find out where the treasure is hidden. The girl carefully makes her way to the well, pulling the bucket up with a lever and finding a bag of gold inside. Suddenly, the leprechaun appears and asks for his possession back. Tori gives up the bag, and the leprechaun inspects inside, confirming that this is his gold, before kissing the girl in the cheek. Disgusted, she runs back into the house and tells the others that their nightmare is over. She helps Nathan back up to his feet, but realizes that Ozzy's ear is badly wounded, asking the others to get ice. Alex walks over to the fridge, when suddenly the leprechaun reappears. He pushes the kid down, but gets pulled off. The creature's hand slams down to the stovetop, but it reveals the heat didn't hurt him. He then runs into the cabinet, and Tori quickly opens it, but the leprechaun appears from another cabinet, demanding the rest of his gold. The creature knows a coin is missing, and they continue to open the cabinets to find him, but he runs away down into the basement. Nathan stumbles over with his shotgun to find where the creature has run off to, when suddenly he appears from the chimney, and Nathan shoots him. Approaching the creature, the group checks to see if the monster is dead, but suddenly it stands up. The leprechaun is still alive and runs away to another room, and then appears behind Nathan, walking across the hall, and he tries to shoot it but misses every shot. They walk back into the kitchen and listen to the floorboards. The leprechaun then bursts out of the floor, and Nathan manages to shoot it, knocking it away. The phone rings and Tori answers it, but the leprechaun picks up to demand his gold back. That's when Ozzy realizes that the creature wants the final gold coin he swallowed. He suggests they ask the house's old owner how to deal with it, recalling that Dan O'Grady would tell him stories about fairies and leprechauns. Nathan remembers that he's been placed into a care home after suffering from a stroke 10 years ago. Tori insists that they leave now, and the group cautiously moves outside, but that's when they're attacked again by the leprechaun. Acting quickly, the group throws shoes for the creature to shine to distract him, while Tori here drives off alone. Okay, the gang is finally starting to realize that bullets are not going to kill this thing all by themselves. They faintly shot the leprechaun multiple times, and he's still up and running. In fact, the leprechaun has only grown stronger and has gained more skills now that he has 99 of his 100 gold coins. They should have really tried to get him all of his coins or none at all, but Tori had no idea that Ozzy had swallowed the 100th coin. These people are screwed unless they think fast, and it's only a matter of time before the leprechaun realizes he needs to kill Ozzy to get his final coin. Tori's on the way to figure out what will kill the leprechaun once and for all, but while she's away, the rest of the gang should rifle through Mr. O'Grady's boxes to see if they can find any Irish protection symbols to safeguard the house. By now, they should have attempted to kill the leprechaun using iron or four-leaf clovers, but since they put themselves in such a terrible position, they have to also think of ways to play defense against the bearded fairy. They're backed up into a corner, and they need to keep themselves from dying before they can try to kill the little guy again. Right now, the leprechaun is outside, and all of Mr. O'Grady's items are still in the basement. This gives the gang the opportunity to dig down into his stuff, while the leprechaun is distracted by Tori trying to find Mr. O'Grady at the care home. Mr. O'Grady was from Ireland and knew enough about leprechauns to know how to catch and kill one, which means that it's possible that he has things in his house that might provide them protection. If he was smart, he would have packed the house with four leaf clovers before bringing home a pile of gold, but we already know he had just one clover on him at the time that he had his stroke. The Celtic knot is a symbolic pattern of a loop knot that has no start or finish. It's been used since the early 8th century and has many variations, one of which is the shield knot, which is used as a symbol of protection. Irish families often have Celtic knots used as decorations throughout their house, and if the O'Grady's have some of these knots, they can help in warding off the leprechaun for the time being. 
St. Bridget's Cross is another Celtic symbol that was said to ward off fire, evil spirits, and hunger as well. Since the fairy is technically an evil spirit, either one of these could do the trick. If I were one of the boys, I would collect these symbols and place them at all the entrances to the house, and prepare myself with the sharpest piece of iron I can find, while Tori comes back with the answer to all of our problems. Tori makes it to the wellness center where she checks the security guard's patient details and finds out where Dan O'Grady's being kept. The girl makes her way to the man's room through this creepy hallway and finds him sitting in a wheelchair staring out of the window. She confesses that the leprechaun is real and needs help from the disabled man. He reveals that there's only one method of killing the creature when suddenly he turns around to reveal that she's talking to the leprechaun himself. Terrified, Tori storms out of the wellness center, being chased by him through the hallways as she runs over into this elevator. Tori manages to close it before the creature can follow when suddenly a blood-soaked Dan O'Grady hangs from the ceiling. He informs the girl that she needs to touch the leprechaun with a four-leaf clover that is growing next to the water well. Only then will she be able to kill the creature and the man dies from his injuries. That makes four victims down with five more to go. Driving back home, the girl searches the ground for a four-leaf clover, but the leprechaun finds her. Tori runs for her life as she's followed by the leprechaun, who chases her to this police car. Heading inside for protection, Tori finds the officer dead, and the leprechaun suddenly appears right outside the window. She jams a baton into his eye, but the creature pulls it out and tears down the car door. Horrified, Tori begs him to leave as the leprechaun rips out the cop's eye and places it into his own eye socket. That's when Nathan shoots him through the car, and they save Tori from a brutal death. She tells the others that they need to find a four-leaf clover and head back to the hell desperately looking for one, while Alex here sets up a trap to take care of the leprechaun for good. Outside, Tori loses hope and flips out at Ozzy for believing in his supernatural nonsense, but suddenly she realizes she managed to find a four-leaf clover over on the ground. Meanwhile, Alex here walks over to finish his trap, but is surprised by the leprechaun jumping out from behind some hay and viciously throws him down. Ozzy comes rushing into the barn and distracts him, revealing that he swallowed the final gold coin. The creature chases him out of the barn and brutally attacks the man. That's when Alex grabs his slingshot and fires the four-leaf clover straight into the monster's mouth. They watch as his body slowly disintegrates and falls down into the well, disappearing into the depths, but it's not over yet. He climbs out of the well, and Nathan realizes that this needs to be finished now. Grabbing a can of gasoline, he pours it into the well and throws a match into it, blowing up the interior and finally leaving Tori's brand new property safe. With the dawning of a new day, they've all learned a valuable lesson. Always sell off what you've stolen before it's too late. But what do you think? How would you be Leprechaun? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe. Check out the How To Beat playlist for more videos like this, and don't forget that from now on, we'll be uploading on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Until next time, have a damn good day.